Hey guys, happy Monday. Thanks for coming in tonight, everyone. So tonight I am going to be putting the binding on my sparkly hourglass block quilt. So we are almost done. I don't think we'll finish tonight, but we may. <laughs> I mean, we'll see how fast this goes uh, tonight, but I'm excited. We are uh, almost done with this hourglass quilt. So thanks for joining me. If you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central uh, on the weekdays when, and we just relax and craft and chit chat and work on a project. And uh, just to let you guys know, I will not be here tomorrow and I will not be here on Thursday either, but I will be here on Wednesday and Friday of this week yet. So uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm going to flip you guys around and we'll get started. Oh, and just a reminder, you can win this quilt still. I will announce a winner, winner once we're done. I'll probably announce it um I'll probably announce it on the 10th. That's when we start our next project. Uh, it'll probably be around then. It it kind of depends on when we get this done yet too and I will send a newsletter out, but if you haven't signed up yet, there is a link to sign up to win this in the description box. Uh, below or above or somewhere. <laughs> so thanks again guys. I'm gonna flip you around and let's get going Hello, hello everyone Okay, so I got my binding all ready to go I'm so happy we did this before cuz how annoying would that be to have to deal with this now? Uh, I love that it's it's done for us already. So all right first thing tonight is we got our quilt here. I am going to trim off all the extra edge. So this is the point where typically I would do a zigzag stitch around just to make sure that the front is held down. But we kind of decided last time that we weren't gonna do that because I have all these stitches going over the edge. Uh, so it wasn't really ne necessary. It, it's held down really well. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, the other thing is what you can do here is really square your quilt up like even with rulers and your cutting mat get this really square. I'm not going to bother with either of that tonight. I am going to just trim with the scissors along the edge of the front here and just have it be what it's going to be. So if it's a little wobbly like I can already tell that this is maybe going in a little far compared to like the next border up but I'm going to just let it be whatever shape it's gonna be. I'm gonna just follow this edge. So that's the first thing. One thing I want to make sure is I don't accidentally have, you know, part of my quilt tucked under here and I accidentally cut all that. I want to really make sure that I am only cutting what I need to be here. So I am gonna go around this edge first and that will be that. So this is the edge that we will be putting our binding onto. So the raw edge of the binding will be matching up with uh, this raw edge that I'm cutting right here. So I'm just going nice and careful. This is an edge that I need to have nice just because I am, like I said, lining up the binding with it. So let me know how your weekend went. I uh, uh, weeded the garden a little bit. It was just beautiful outside. We had dinner outside last night. John grilled some pork chops and vegetables and we sat outside and looked at the garden and ate our food. It was nice. Gotta, gotta enjoy this weather while we have it. All right, so I'm just slowly going to go around this edge, but then we will get we will get everything sewn on, the binding sewn on tonight. I don't know if we'll get it finished, but we'll get the one side sewn for sure. So again, this is the opportunity that you can really square up your quilt, but I'm not bothering with that. I'm just doing it free form along this edge. 
I've already switched the thread in my sewing machine, so it's uh, not the metallic thread anymore because I'm not going to use that to sew the first part up. Your weekend's been good. Oh, neighbors have been setting off fireworks. Yeah, so if you hear some banging, uh, our neighbors are setting off fireworks here as well. Oh, your dogs are on edge. Yeah, poor puppies. We had a friend whose dog had to, just would go hide underneath the bed. Yeah, this is definitely not a perfectly straight edge right here, but you know, that's okay. I'm, I'm not worrying too much about that. It's a free form edge and that's perfectly fine too. It'll be kind of wonky, which will be fun. And just double checking that I'm not cutting something underneath. Hi from Eastern North Carolina. Nice. It's got to be really warm over there now, I would think. That's where my brother and his wife just moved to Eastern North Carolina. I haven't visited them, there, visited them yet, there yet. I need to make a trip down there. Downloaded the travel folio pattern. Awesome, cut the fabric pieces. Oh, I need to cut the interfacing stuff. Yeah, so you guys, the travel art folio by Patty Young of Mod Kid is our next project that will be starting on uh, July 10th and um, oh god between 90 and 100 a day oof but we'll be starting that on July 10th there is a PDF of her pattern so there aren't any kits available anymore but there there are there's the the PDF download of of the pattern so uh, that's available yet and that's great also if you wanted to use your own fabric too versus the kit fabric uh, so there is a list of what you need for that project with with the pattern I think it says uh, before you buy the pattern too but yeah because there you'll if you're interested you'll want to check it out because there are some supplies on there, uh, like this fusible fleece and, and some other things that you might want to check into. It's, you know, it's not just grab from your fabric stash and get going. There are some interfacing type things for that. But they're all available online. Um, no, the PDF is not free. I believe it's, oh, I think it's uh, $8 or something like that. I'm excited though. It's gonna be cute. I haven't done a lot with interfacing and fusible fleece and all those fun materials that are, you know, this mystery to me. So I'm I'm pretty excited. You know, I like I like these projects. I like learning new things. I mean, that's what this whole whole hour hourglass block was quilt is just you know trying new things. You know, we tried this metallic floss. We tried just the hourglass block quilt the the blocks and um, a few other things and that's what this this travel art folio and a lot of these things in the designer series that's that's what it's going to be like new things to learn new things to try oh it's 7 7.95 oh man i love i love this scissors this is my kai uh 72 30 uh scissors it is so like, I love the sound it makes. It's just so smooth and it cuts like butter. I got it at a, at a trade show. It's an expensive scissors, but oh man, it, it, it just feels good to use. And it's a, it's a dressmaker's scissors, which means it's, it's flat, so I can lay it right on, right on the flat surface and cut, which is super duper nice, especially for, for um, 
you know, a quilt like this. I could get my cutting board out and I could get the rulers and square this all up, but frankly, that just sounds really cumbersome and I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> so we're just doing it this way. I can tell that everything is not perfectly straight. It is a little wobbly, um, this line, but who cares? I think it all adds to it. I like all those little hand handmade nuances and things. It's good to know how to do it. Like, it's good to know how to get it all nice and perfectly square and all that. But, you know, once you know the technique and whatever and you know you can do it well, it doesn't mean you, you have to do it a certain way, you know? It's always good to learn and improve, but there's no rules on how something has to look or something. Unless you're entering a, a quilt, a judged quilt thing, then then there's rules. <laughs> but for the rest of us, uh, no rules. Okay, there we go. That's our four sides. So let's kind of straighten this out again. I wanna one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, I'm, I wanna start the binding. I usually start the binding on like a. Uh, a lower edge. It doesn't really matter, really. But I, I do want to start my binding somewhere kind of in the center-ish. I don't want to start the binding right, right on a corner. And there's a million ways to sew a binding on as well. Actually, before I forget, I'm going to sew the binding onto the back first, which I typically don't do. What I usually do is I sew it to the front, and then I hand stitch it to the back. But we're going to do it the opposite way. We're going to... Um, we're gonna sew it on the back, and then we're gonna machine stitch it with the metallic thread to the front. So I'm doing it the opposite way that I usually do. I'm gonna sew it onto the back. Uh, I am, Deborah. you can cut it out if you like. I am gonna cut everything live. So um, I'm gonna do the whole process live. So if you wanna wait for me to cut it out, or if you wanna wait to cut it out with me, uh, you're welcome to do that. I think that if it's going to be hung, oh, you wouldn't concern yourself with the squaring if it's the quilt's not going to be hung up. All right, so I am going to start kind of in the center. This is plenty good. And I, there's different ways to do this, but this is how, how I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to, I want to have like a six inch or so. This is a little longer, maybe an eight inch. We'll do about six inch, about a six inch tail. I'm going to just mark it right here. So that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna leave a six inch tail here and I'm gonna have a tail when I'm finished as well. So let's start sewing. Uh, I'm just gonna get this in the machine and uh, this is just gonna sit next to me and I'll just keep unrolling it and like untwisting it if it needs to be. Okay, what we're doing, just to show you guys is, so my binding was a two and a half inch long strip that we made. Let's see if I can open it. So it was a two and a half inch strip that we pressed the entire way. So one side has a fold and the other side has these two raw edges. We're gonna match the raw edge up with the raw edge of the quilt. So all the raw edges are together here. And you can clip this if you want, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just sew. I'm not gonna worry about clipping it along the way. I mean, maybe things will pull funny or I don't know, but, but I'm gonna just let it be. Uh, I'm going to just undo it as I go. So, all right, here we are. I love looking at the back of this. Look at all the texture. It's so fun. Okay, here we are. Come over here. So I did already, already, let's see if I can get you guys a better view. I did already change my, uh, my thread on top there, so it's not the metallic anymore. I switched it back to the gray. I'm going to put this on the floor. I'll put it right here. Uh, I put the gray back in and I checked the tension. I had to redo the tension and everything so it would work with, you know, the new thread. And I think, I think I have it good. So we can just start. All right. Oh, let's turn it on. That would be helpful. And I don't need, um, don't need this leader in here. We'll just snip that away. 
Oh, there you go. There's a firework for you. Did you hear it? <laughs> All right, we're going to start right about here. All right, again, make sure all your layers are underneath there. And I'm gonna sew this, you know, about a quarter inch in. I'm just gonna use the edge of my walking foot as a guide. I think it's a hair over a quarter inch, but that should be okay. So, all right, I'm going to start. I'm gonna give it a little back tack. And I'm just gonna be real careful that I have all the layers and I'm going to keep this edge and I gotta, I'm going to have to use this hand to help move the quilt along, I think. Man, I haven't done a binding in a really long time. This feels kind of funny for me. It's been a while. All right, so my border is wanting to pull and do funny things just because uh, how we did this crisscrossing. It's wanting to pull on the bias a little bit. So I am having to kind of be careful that all my layers are together correctly. So I'm gonna sew this edge until I get a quarter, uh, a quarter inch to the end and then I'm gonna stop. So we're not sewing all the way to the end. That's important. If you're using bias tape, that's a different process than this. And for, for a bias tape where you're sewing both the front and the back on at the same time, that you would sew to the end, but not, not when you're doing this uh, strip way of doing it. I think this is called a French, it's called like a French fold binding. It's something something like that is, I don't, I don't know if I'm, maybe one of you guys know uh, this style of, of binding. It's a French something. I think it's, you know, a French fold binding, I think maybe. All right, so I'm going until I am a quarter inch from the edge. And I think I'm gonna estimate that. I'm gonna try and point with this, but I'm gonna estimate that that's about where it hits the front of my uh, walking foot. So that's where I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna back tack it there. So once this kind of this edge kind of lines up with that point, I'm gonna go a little slower. I think one more. Yeah, we're gonna call it there. So now I'm gonna just back tack. All right, now I'm gonna take the whole thing out of the machine. Oop. There we go. I'm gonna trim that. So we've stopped about a quarter inch from the edge. Pulled through a little but that's okay. All right. Now we're gonna rotate so we can start this next edge. Let me just roll this up a little bit the other way. I'm trying to get this Get this edge, this whole edge nice and flat for me and then I'll scrunch back up this way. Okay. This guy sitting in my lap now. All right, here is the little fold that we do to get a mitered corner. And a mitered corner is that nice pretty corner that you get right at the at the corner here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the binding and we're gonna fold it at a 45 degree angle straight in the air, like that. And then I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna fold it right uh, along the edge here. So I'm gonna fold it back down, right like that. You can even clip it if you want. I still have my clip around here, so. Why don't we give that a try? Clipping right at that fold. And we're gonna line up these edges again. They should be in line. And now we're gonna start a quarter inch in from both sides, if that makes sense. I'm gonna even put a little finger press in there. So there we go. Get this back in the machine. And once we have a little bit sewn, I'll show you uh, why we did that. So, all right, 
Again, starting about a quarter inch in both ways. So quarter inch this way and kind of lining up this with the needle about right there, I'd say. All right, then we can start up again. Do a little back tack there. I don't need this guy anymore and uh, we should be good. So now we just continue along this whole edge and we just do that uh, three more times. And again, once I get a little further here, I'll show you uh, what doing that little uh, 45 degree up and down flip that we just did for the, for the corner. I'll show you uh, what that does in a bit. My corners are always hard like a knot when I fold them over, like a knot. Huh, I'm not sure quite what you mean by like a knot. Like there's a bump in it or something, like a hard bump. I don't know, I, I'm not sure I've done enough, done enough bindings to know, but I will, I'll see if I feel like that with mine um, and then we can, we can troubleshoot maybe. All right, I think that's far enough for me to show you. So, all right, it might be if you haven't, um, you know, I think maybe you need to, do you clip the corner? I don't quite remember, but anyway, so here's where we did that flip up. So eventually we will be flipping this inside out, kind of like that, and then going on to the front and we will be flipping this over the front here. And this over the front here. And then we will get like a nice, a nice corner here. You know, right now it's not very nice, but if I get it all the way back in there and then folded, there we go. So that will give us our uh, nice corner, uh, that extra fold and flip. Otherwise it's like really stretched around. It'll want to be curved. The corner will be thicker, but it will lie flat with the instructions Alyssa's is giving. Okay, yeah, so it is, you know, there is some thickness to it for sure, but you do have that nice flat mitered corner. So anyway, that's that's what we're going for. That's what this extra little flip flip does. That took me a while to figure out. I, I didn't, um, I didn't know how to do that at first and I was just going to the edge and then turning and then there wasn't enough bulk to flip it over to the other side. So that that didn't give me very nice corners. This way will give you the, like the nice miter corners. So we'll focus on that quite a bit when we do the front, when we sew on the front. getting that, that miter and that flip just right. Actually, we'll probably um, spend some time wonder clipping this thing. I haven't actually done that before. Wonder clipped the binding. Oh, actually, maybe it, maybe that slash quilt, we might've done that, but we didn't do, we didn't do a border like this or a binding like this. We did it a little differently. Um, but yeah, we'll really focus on getting those good miters when we, uh, when we do the next step. If you're doing it carefully, oh, no bulk, no cutting. All right. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I didn't, I won't cut the corner or anything like that. The corner actually helps give that shape. It, it's a guide for the shape. So I'm, I'm also trying not to like stretch my binding compared to the back. I'm, I'm really trying to push these in, in at the same time.
you know, and I'm trying to let the machine do the work, but you know, it's pretty bulky. So we're getting close to this end, so we'll do our another 45 degree up and down fold. I'm sure that's actually got a, a term too, but we'll see. We'll do it again, so I'll show you. I'll show you again three more times uh, for our three corners. And then what I'm excited about is I want to show you how I do, how I sew the the ends together, because that that's uh, that I learned uh, is it's different than how I learned originally. And I think it's really kind of magical. So uh, we will try it that way. And you guys can let me know if this is how you do it too when we're done here. All right, I'm approaching the end. So remember, this is where I have to stop at that quarter inch mark. And I'm getting kind of twisted. I'm gonna have to untwist my binding a little bit. All right, a couple more. All right, I'm gonna go one and then back tack it. All right. And let's take it out again. Give it a little snip. Okay. First off, let's rotate this whole guy again. Get it situated for the next, next row. All right, now we'll pull it down. This is the other shorter side. It's fairly shorter. All right, first off, oh, look at the binding so much smaller. I'm gonna just rotate this. You learn to sew the quarter inch, then pivot and sew the corner. Sew to the quarter inch, then pivot and sew. Oh, I think you can do that too. Yeah, I could leave this in the machine. Why don't we try that next time? I think that's actually how I used to do it as well. Yeah, I think we can do this all. Well, but then the fold. No, I'm gonna keep doing it like this because I want that fold to be, I need that fold to align with the top and I can't do that without it getting, taking it out of the machine here. So I think, I think I'll keep doing it this way. So, all right, uh, let's fold it upwards. So I'm actually, you know, you can think about as in like you're folding it this way, just folding it and then rotating it to 45 degrees. And what you want to look for is like, this should be aligned with this. So I, I stitched it like one too many. I'm going to just kind of pull it a little bit. Like I could take that stitch out, but I think we'll be fine. So I'm, I'm looking for this edge to align with the edge of my, my quilt here. Let's just give that a little fold. And now folding it down. See, like if I left it in the machine, I feel like I wouldn't be able to align this fold to the top here. So I'm gonna take it out of my machine each time. So, all right, I'm gonna just put a clip on that fold. That worked pretty well last time, just to kind of hold that little corner there. All right, now I am just lining up the raw edges again and we should be good to go. Ugh, this is falling off the floor, or down to the floor though. Let's get it in my lap. All right, we're ready. We'll be doing two more of those. So I'm not starting at the end. I'm starting a quarter inch in. Right there. Back tacking. The back tacking is like tying a knot on the sewing machine. So that's just gonna hold my thread in place. It won't like pull apart. So that's what the back tacking. And the back tacking is just going, you know, forward and then reverse and then forward again, a stitch or two. All right, let's go. We're ready. All this bulk. So no news on my on my table or anything yet, my extension table. But I think there might be a a couple days in between 
in between this project and our July 10th project, I think I might start quilting my Splendid Sampler quilt for, you know, a day or two or however many days there are in between. We're kind of all set up for quilting. It'd be cool to get a few rows done on, on that, I think. I even have a whole pile of bobbins wound already. Uh, I think that'll be our little interim before our next project, before the travel art folio. You like to use your walking foot? Helps so much with quilts. Yeah, I'm I'm digging the walking quilt right now for this for sure, with all these layers. It's definitely helping me move things along, I think. I like the sound it makes. <laughs> I like that it's fancy. It's got all these special things that it does. Special mechanics, I feel like. Feels fancy to use it. Oh, I'm getting a little folded funny. There we go. I love the back of this quilt. I want to do this style of quilting again for sure. This this double uh, kind of diamond. That was really fun and so simple. Like especially if you have a quilt that's just a whole pile of um, you know patchwork blocks or something. This would be uh, a fun, a fun, quick, easy quilting pattern. Like if you had a pile of baby quilts to quilt or something, this would be a fun. Fun way to do it, I think. I know the walking foot. <laughs> it is relaxing. Just that I must have cut it really funny here. I'm gonna pretend this is straight. It's fun hearing it. All right, we're almost to the. What would this be? The third. The third corner. Ooh, I almost forgot I gotta stop at the quarter inch here. Oh, the stopping at a quarter inch. Yeah, that might be the issue. Or, or not taking it out. Yeah. Just give it a try this way and see if it works better. All right. World twisted again, but that's okay. Let's get it set up again. All right, let's do this again. So, all right, we're gonna fold it up that, at that 45 degrees. So I think about it as like just folding it in half and then rotating it up. So you have the 45 degrees, ooh, that's good. And we're, again, wanting this raw edge to align with our quilt here. If it's too far this way, then you've stitched one too many. If it's too far this way, then you stitched, uh, you didn't stitch enough, but that's fine. You don't have to re-stitch it. You can just kind of fudge it, just adjust it so that this edge is in line. I will try not starting at the end. Oh, yeah, that might be, that might be, um, that could be a reason for extra bulk too. All right, so there we go. Now we're gonna fold it down. I got that 45 degree angle there. Now we're gonna fold the whole thing downward and line up that fold with the edge up here. Again, I'm kind of really digging. I've never used a wonder clip to hold this in place before, but it's really working well. It allows me to let this hang out while I adjust other things. So all right, one more, one more corner after that. Oh, let's get this in my lap again. One more corner and uh, we'll be done. The binding's getting shorter. Dang. I'm assuming we measured right and have enough binding, but now I'm kind of freaking out a little. <laughs> I think I think we'll be good. All right, let's get this under the quarter inch. Edges are matched. Yep. Back tack. There we go. Oh, get rid of this guy. 
All right, this is our last long edge, and soon we will be at the point where we'll be matching up our two ends. And uh, that's fun to do. It's a little mind bender, I think, for me at least, but uh, I, I really enjoy doing it this way. I'll show you what I mean once we, once we get there. Look, this is where uh, the two different color bobbin threads <laughs> match or meet. One's a little yellower, one's a little tealer, more teal. All right, this is gonna get resituated. I'm a little folded funny, rotated funny. There we go. Okay. Took you ages to get the, the end binding neat when joining. Yeah, so I'll show you this way and it works out perfectly usually. And it's, it's just really fun because you get to bend it around all weird and it's like, oh no, is this gonna work? And then it just magically works. So I haven't done it in a long, long time, but we will, uh, we'll give it a try. I haven't done it in at least a year and a half because I've been working on the Splendid Sampler and haven't done any other project besides that, so no bindings for at least that long. All right, we're getting there. Man, it's tough moving a big bulky quilt around, and this is just a little tiny quilt, so ugh. It's gonna be interesting to do the Splendid Sampler. My Splendid Sampler is a large queen. It's a pretty large queen size. I hope I have binding, or I just had a, I just thought about my uh, bobbin thread. So hopefully that's not a sign that we're gonna run out of bobbin thread soon again. Whenever bobbin kind of pops in my brain, we kind of run out it's a short while after. <laughs> but I hope we don't run out of bobbin. All right. Let's keep going. Almost to the last corner. I'm gonna have a ton of binding left. Good. I was scared. But I got plenty. Almost there, so I'm gonna watch for my quarter inch from the end. Back tack it. All right, this is the last last corner here. Watch a demo video earlier. Slightly different corners. Well, I'm Penguin and Fish, and I don't think I did a video for, for these before. Oh, you know, I might have. Um, was it for my slash quilt? That was a little different quilt because that didn't have a, a binding like this. I flipped it over from the back, so that was that was kind of different. But I don't know. I don't know if we're talking about the same thing or not. So, all right. Up. Oh. I know all that math. I I should have plenty, right? I know. Just when when I glanced down at the binding and I saw so much gone already, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm using this up fast. But no, there's there's tons. Yeah, and we did so much math. It would have been pretty crazy to not have a uh, enough binding. We had so much extra. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a search. So here's my end where we started. I have my six inch or so, and I want to leave 
a good six inches on the other side too. So I will probably stop. So I, I'm, I don't know if you guys can see. So here's where I ended. I'll stop around here as well. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want, I do want a gap. And the bigger the gap, actually, the easier it is. You don't want a huge gap, but I'm, you know, six to eight inches. So I'm going to stop it. You know, I'm going to even mark it. Oh, oh wait, I'm using my marker up there. I'll just keep my eye on it. Unless I have a little, I have a pin here. I have a pin available. I'll stop about right here. There we go. That's my marker. If I don't put a marker, I'll just end up keeping on sewing and then I'll, I'll forget. <laughs> All right. Here's our last corner. Let's get that in, uh, get it in a quarter inch on both sides again, a little further. There we go. Back tack that guy. Get rid of him. Ugh. Almost there. There, I see my pin coming up. Oh, this is something that um, I didn't, that you can do beforehand. So you can see my joining right here. Ideally, I don't want to, um, I don't want this to be where I end. So luckily, I got lucky. My ending point is here. I don't want this to be hanging out in the final thing. It actually won't matter so much, but, um, you know, it is close to my ending, so I will have two diagonal lines like this awfully close to each other. I could have laid this out on the floor and put the binding around and then shifted the bindings, uh, start pointing and stuff so I didn't have them so close, but... It doesn't matter. Oh, on the on um, Pat Sloan site for the for the binding. All right, I'm gonna go right to my pin here, and um, geez, a lot of bulk hanging around still. So about right there, and I'm going to back back it again. All right, taking it out of the machine. Oh, where did I come up with the name Penguin and Fish? It's from an animation that I did during uh, college. <laughs> I actually have the animation. It's on um, it's on my uh, YouTube, and it's actually if you get my emails, it's it's at the bottom of all my emails. The the animation that it came from. It's loosely based on uh, my husband and I when we met. Ooh, I think I did this a little wrong. I think I probably wanted this back a little bit farther, but I think we'll be okay. So what we're going for is right in the middle of this space, we want an overlap. We want to overlap our, our pieces here. But since this isn't really in the space, I'm going to actually just trim this quickly, like right here. Because we want our overlap to be right in the middle here. And we want to overlap it we want our pieces to overlap the width of, of this. So this is two and a half inches. Let's get, get a little ruler out. So this is, yep, two and a half inches. So if you did a three inch, if you did a three inch binding, you'd want to do three inches. If you did two and a quarter inch binding, you would want to do two and a quarter. Ours is two and a half. So we want to overlap these. by two and a half inches. And you know what? I think I should have had this go a little further back, but I think we'll do it this way. Oh, is this how you do yours? All right, so we're laying, making sure the quilt is flat. I got this here. I can see the edge here. Let's measure our two and a half inches. 
well, I'm starting from this side. So there, I'm setting it right there. Two and a half is right there. So I'm gonna trim this at the two and a half. All right, right like that. Oh, you do it this way too. Just use the pieces you cut off to measure the overlap. Oh, that makes sense. Um, anyway, so there we go. We have an overlap of two and a half inches. So this is the fun part. So now, now let's get a little looser in here. And I got my pin here. So we want, we want a little bit of looseness in here. We're gonna kind of pull these together like this. So first we wanna lay this flat. And what we wanna do now is put right sides together. So I'm going to unfold this. It's a little difficult for me to see because my right and wrong side is the same, but the side where the fold is pointing at us, that's the right side. So I'm gonna just, what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip the back up on the one side. We still have it horizontal like this. And then this one we're gonna flip up and then open like this so that this is still the right side. We're gonna match, again, you can pull these together. You're gonna match those right sides together. So it can be a little bit fiddly. This is why you want more of an open space here. I kind of messed that up a little bit. You know what? Let's get this clip working for us here. All right, so what we wanna do is line up our edges. And we are ultimately, yeah, I should have left more space here. We're ultimately going to sew the diagonal here. You know what? I might actually unpick this a little bit. Yeah, we're going to do that. Um, seam ripper. It's going to be easier. Well, I don't know where that is. So it's going to be a little easier for you guys to see if, if we have a little more space here. So let me snip this open a bit. There we go. So don't worry about um, pulling that out. What we want is um, more space for this. All right, so let's try this again. Laying it flat, the overlap is still the two and a half inches. This one we are gonna flip open by bringing the back up. And this one we're gonna flip open by rotating it up like this, and then opening. There, now I have more room to work with. So I'm going to just, let's put a wonder clip there again, and I'm gonna put a pin just right on this diagonal. Let's get a pin just holding this edge here for me right now. get some more pins. I know it's it's kind of magic. It looks like what are, am I doing? Uh, but it really is kind of magic and I'll show you in a sec. I always get a little nervous that I'm going to sew on the wrong side, but I think we're I think we're good here still. All right. So here we are. I'm going to sew. I'll put a pin where I can show you. Let's get this as flat as we can. We're going to sew from this corner down to this corner. And you can draw it on there. You know what? Why don't we draw it on there? All this bulk. Just so you guys can see exactly what I'm saying. So let's see. I have a pencil. I have my ruler. We'll remove this pin. Yeah, it makes you wonder who worked out this method, right? All right, there we go. Now we're nice and flat. So I'm going on either corner here. There. So sewing right along that line. All right, so now we just gotta maneuver, maneuver all this into its spot. This big old quilt. 
All right. Oh, I gotta rotate this way. All right, there we go. The trick is dealing with all this bulk, but once I get it started, I think we'll be okay. Turn this guy on. Get those edges aligned. All right, I'm gonna just give it a back tack to start out with. All right, now let's get straightened out and follow that line. Straighten both of these out. Wait until you see what this looks like when we're done though. I know it looks crazy and it's like, what are we doing? This is a mess, but there. All right, I got everything super flat. I'm gonna follow my pencil line. There we go. And I'm gonna add a little, another back tack in there. Get rid of this. And now we get to see. So this is the magic part. Okay, back to the back of the quilt. So here's that part that we sewed. Oh, look, it just popped into place. So there we go. So uh, let me unfold it again. Here's our line. This is where we sewed. And now I just pulled it. I'm refolding that edge. And look, it's the exact perfect size. So I just did a test. Um, now, now that I know that I sewed it on the right side and everything looks good, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to cut this, cut this, uh, triangle off. So, but isn't that kind of magical? So here we go again. We sewed along that line. We folded that up all crazy. You know, it was hard to get that, you know, you want this big space. You need enough room to maneuver around. But once you refold your binding lines, it is the exact right size. Flat. See? Here's our gap. Perfectly, perfectly flat. So now all we do is we start up again. You know what? I might just hold that together with, um, I'm just going to center it with and throw the wonder clip in just to make sure we don't pull it all funny. But yeah, so I'm going to start up where I pulled the stitches out a little bit more because, you know, the bigger, the bigger the hole, the easier it is. And I was a little tight in there. So I, I undid a few of those stitches. So I'm going to start a little bit back here, back tack it, and then sew all the way to the edge here. And then we're, we're together. So, and this way you get that nice edge here. You're not putting a couple layers of fabric together. It's just like all of our other uh, little edges, all our other little joinings. Just at a weird, weird timing right at the end. It's fun though. It, it you know, it's confusing and it feels really awkward when you do it, but man, it is, it is kind of magic. A little magic trick. Oh, you've never seen this done before? Yeah, once I figured this technique out, I'm like, oh my god, it's amazing. Uh, I'm never doing it differently than this again. I, I, the way I uh, did it before is I made like a perfect edge on one side and then the other side fit perfectly into there, but it was bulky and definitely not as clean and perfect as this method for sure. It's magic. I just love that it unfolds just all perfectly. You wouldn't even know that this is where the joining was. It could have been any one of these diagonals. All right, so this uh, clip is at the center of that. And we'll just go to where we started. But yeah, the trick to make that easier is to have that large gap. I mean, you know, that the gap that we're sewing up right now. I mean, that was tough to do when I didn't have the gap large enough. So when in doubt, just pull it out, uh, pull out the stitches like like what I did there. All right, I'm connected to where we started. And that is it. Snip and our um, binding is on. So next time on um, Wednesday, so I won't be here tomorrow, but on Wednesday, we will be 
flipping this around. Oh, your son's working on the monkey. Oh, that's awesome, Ashley. Thanks so much for sharing. Uh, so, all right. Oh, this is how you do it, but you don't cut off the right amount. Oh, leave a larger space. That is definitely important. But yeah, you want the overlap to be however thick your 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 uh, binding is um, undone. So mine was two and a half inches. Again, if you do a three inch, people like doing different binding sizes for different reasons. If you do a three inch, then you want the overlap to be three inches. If you do two and a quarter or two, you want it that much. But all right, but now uh, what we're gonna do on Wednesday is we will flip all of our edges around to the front and we will work on our pretty little mitered corners. So there's one of our corners. How I do that is I flip, flip one side and then we will flip the other side right on the edge. And they should meet up pretty well right in the middle. And that we ideally, we want to cover up our bobbin thread here. So we will be pulling it kind of around our bobbin thread. So our plan is to, look how nice it looks on the back. Our plan is to, we will wonder clip all these in place. So I have my larger, my medium sized wonder clips. So we'll just go around get everything in place how we want. And then we'll get the metallic thread on again. So let's just flip around right here near the metallic thread. I think my quarter inch was a little bit larger than a quarter inch, but oh well. Then I'm gonna sew with the metallic thread all the way, all the way along here. So the whole entire thing will be framed by a metallic, metallic border. Well, that's it, so next up, Binder clips, not binder clips, wonder clips, and sewing it on, it will be done. Oh, and I do have a little penguin and fish label that we will we will tuck in and sew in there as well. <laughs> I always gotta put my little labels on, on stuff. Makes it look finished. <laughs> Funnest part. All right, that is it though. That is one of my most fun things to do though, is that funny little, that funny little way to bind. I just get such a kick out of that. So, all right, there we go. I'm going to flip you guys around and we will call it an evening. Hello everyone. So I hope that was fun, that different way of binding. I know that was not the first way I learned how to bind and, and uh, when I discovered like all those special little folds to get those mitered corners and that funny way to join the ends, I just was over the moon, magic tricks. Every little trick um, is just like another superpower. I love it. <laughs> so, all right, guys, uh, thanks again for joining me. And I will get this up on YouTube right away here. So it should be up in a couple hours if you wanted to watch uh, those different methods again. And uh, it will also be here on Facebook right away here if you want to zoom through the Facebook Live. And this is gonna be given away, this quilt. So sign up with the link in... Uh, in the post here if you want to sign up for it. I'll do a newsletter soon about when I will uh, when I will do the announcement, but the announcement will be in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group, so I hope you join there as well. Thanks again, have a great fourth tomorrow, and um, stay cool. <laughs> See you tomorrow, or on, on uh, Wednesday, guys. <laughs>